So, I'm going to derive the wave equation in one dimension. So, for the purposes of this proof, I am going to probe an infinitesimally small section of a wave, which I have depicted, represented here. So, here's my wave. I'm pulling it on it with tension T1, tension T2. Now, we're working with modest amplitudes, so we can assume that these two tensions are equal and opposite. I call this angle theta, I call this angle theta, plus d theta. Now I call this d theta because it's a really, really, really small, tiny section of the wave. So it's infinitesimally small. It's a small change in theta. And similarly, as you can guess, I call this dx. Now I begin with asking myself, well, what is the force in the y direction? And to be clear, we're only interested anything in the y direction, any force, any movement in the y direction. So the force in the y direction, just by looking at the tensions, is minus T1, because this is downward, times sine of theta plus T2, sine of theta plus D theta. Now, we're using small angle approximation, and we're working radians. So, by these rules, it makes perfect sense to say theta is roughly equivalent to sine of theta. Remember, we're working with the infinitesimal, so it's not actually that sloppy to assume that. This becomes, therefore, this just simplifies to t d theta. I know this looks a little bit probably like voodoo, but if you follow this through, it actually makes a lot of sense. This is the first statement or first equation that we're working with, right? And I call this equation one, right? Now, I want to look, I want to explore more with the force. Um, now, from Newton's second law of motion, his famous second law of motion, we can tell that the force in the y direction is equal to mass times acceleration in the y direction. And it's a vector, so that's why I put the arrows there. Now, in order to really do anything with the mass here, I'm going to introduce, and you'll see why, mu. And mu just tells us the mass per unit length. And in this case, as we're only focusing rigorously on this section of the wave, this simply becomes dx. I multiply both sides by dx, and I'm ready to substitute this into m. I'll move this aside here just to make it easier. Now what's acceleration? Well, acceleration is the second derivative position with res respect to time, right? I mean, velocity is change in position over time and acceleration therefore must be the second derivative, change in position over time. And I write this as a partial derivative only because I am saying specifically that motion in the x direction is being ignored. It is kept constant. So I could replace acceleration like so. Okay, well, we've made some pretty good advancement here. Now, let's take a break from this and let's look at d theta. I want to put another partial derivative in because why not? Now, from trigonometry, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So in this case, the tangent of theta is the change in y over the change in x. Remember, it's infinitesimally, so I put a d there. And it's partial derivative only because I'm keeping time constant. That's the only reason why. So I take the derivative of that with respect to x. So I take d theta over dx. And this becomes just the second partial derivative of y with respect to x. Oops, sorry, a bit of notation there. And what is tan theta? What's the derivative of that? Well, it's the cosecant squared of theta, right? 
but for really, really small angles, cosine of theta is just 1. So I could happily rub that out. Now what next? Well, I'm just going to multiply dx both sides. So d theta, it seems somehow really, really simple now. It's just become this, and I can substitute into that, which is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm just rearranging it here, that's all. All right. Well, because we said that we're working with modest uh, amplitudes and uh, the tensions of the forces, obviously this must be equal to each other. So, I am going to just simply rewrite that out. Immediately, dx's cancel. So, I want to bring mu over here, so I divide both sides by mu. So now I ask myself, what is t divided by mu? This seems rather peculiar, doesn't it? Well, if you do some dimensional analysis, it actually seems to be quite intuitive. So tension you can think of as a force. So that's mass times acceleration by Newton again. And I could just write it out in terms of dimensions over, we've defined this as mass per unit length, right? The masses cancel out. What does this become? Well, this becomes L squared, doesn't it? So, finally, this looks quite familiar, doesn't it? If I just rewrite it as this, which I can, and I just do a little bit rearranging. We know that this is length divided by time squared. But what is length divided by time? It's velocity, isn't it? So this suddenly becomes something that we're so familiar with, which is velocity squared here. We arrive at this. In order to make this even more general, I could just put u, which is any abstract dimension that you want to work with. Well, we were working with y in this case, but u is perfectly fine. And this is the wave equation. And this becomes really important in classical, mecha classical mechanics and then later on in uh, quantum mechanics.